Hello and welcome to Virtual Parent Night. This is Doug McGough. I am one of the math teachers here at Reno High, and I'd like to welcome you and your students. So first off, a little about me. I'm teaching Algebra 1, Algebra 2 Honors, and Math Support this year. Before becoming a teacher, which this is my fourth year teaching, I was an officer in the U.S. Navy. So uh, I taught 7th and 8th grade math over at uh, E. Autist Vaughn, as well as Algebra over there. And this is now my second year at Reno High. Uh, I've taught Algebra both years, and this is my first year teaching, teaching Algebra two honors. Uh, as it says there, my favorite part of being in the Navy was helping young men and women achieve success. And it's my favorite part about teaching, too. Having the opportunity, I consider it a real honor to be able to have your sons and daughters uh, in the room with me and trying to help them find their way through math as well as learning how to apply it into their regular life. So first off, a little bit about what the requirements are for Washoe County School District to get a diploma. So to graduate with a diploma, a student needs a minimum of Algebra 1, both Semester 1 and 2, Geometry, both Semester 1 and 2, and any combination of Algebra 2 or pre-college math. So algebra is a cornerstone for all of these. And you'll see the notes there about some caveats that go along with when pre-college math would be appropriate. So some classroom policy. First off, attendance. So attendance policy this year, as you likely know, has been waived. So there is no automatic failure if you don't meet the 90% attendance. But that said, when the students are home on their at-home work day, that is not a day off. That is a day of school, and they must be working on their at-home day to be successful. They also have an attendance task every day that they need to check to make sure that they get credited for attending. That would essentially be like the attendance task is like showing up to school. Then in addition to the attendance task, each day there will be an assignment on Teams that will tell the kids what they have to do to be able to uh, complete their work for that day at home. If a student mi must miss school, particularly if they're excluded due to potential COVID symptoms, then I will work with you to make sure they have the work they need to not fall behind. For the most part, they will be just tracking along on Teams. And the way we set it up is we do video-based lessons. We post the links to YouTube videos onto the team site and the students should watch those and take their notes and then when they're done taking their notes their next day they come into school and they do their homework in class where they can ask questions we can go over the notes we can go over some sample problems and it's there to help them out so if a student is excluded of course they would be doing that homework at home and they should send me a note if uh, if they're having challenges and maybe we can talk through some of the problems together if, like we just had with the smoke, uh, we end up on a full distance model, then I will um, require the kids to be participating in a virtual lesson online through Teams as well during their normally scheduled class period on, on their day that they would normally be in school. Attendance at those was not great uh, during the smoke days, but for the most part they were not really required we didn't really put it in place but if we do go to a long period of uh, virtual learning because of school closure due to smoke or virus or any other reason we would expect the students to be at least able to open up the teams on their phone to participate in the virtual lesson we know that that's not optimal because a screen is so small Makeup work. If a student misses class, they get one day per day absent to make up the work, plus the first day they get back, they get that extra day to pick up their work. So as long as the students turn in their, their uh, products, their assignments, in accordance with this policy, then it counts as on time. We don't penalize them for physically not being here when they were on a, an actual absence day. But if they were not absent, they do show up to school, but they just don't have their work done. Then they get a zero for that missing work. 
If they have it partially done, they'll get 5 out of 10 for partially completed work, and of course 10 out of 10 for fully completed work. For the most part, I do not collect paper homework because we're trying to minimize touching paper during the uh, coronavirus. So if they do not bring their work in on the day they're supposed to be here when it's due, then they can bring it in a little later for algebra students. We know it's tough being a freshman and sometimes they forget. So if they bring it in a little late, I'll still give them back 8 out of 10 points. 10, 10 out of 10 if you're there turning it in on time on the day it's due and it's all done. Or 8 out of 10 for just turning in a day or two late. In other words, a day or two physical late. If they don't turn any homework in for a significant period of time, they see their grades are all zeros in the book. Homework is a big chunk of our grade. So they can still make it up. But if it's weeks later, then I'm only going to give them half credit. Generally speaking, very late is considered any time after the quiz or test for that material. So the whole point of doing homework is to get good at the work before the test, not after. So algebra does not have a textbook. The district does have a textbook. It's called Envision. And I actually use that textbook with my uh, honors students, or mostly they were GT cohort over in middle school for eighth grade. It is a really tough textbook. So instead of that, we do handouts. And we use the handouts for note taking and homework, as well as we'll, we'll give common assessments that all seven of the algebra teachers here use. So when your students have a note taker, it doesn't matter if they're in my algebra class or any of the other teachers' classes, they are going to have the exact same work. So if they're in my math support class, it doesn't matter who their algebra teacher is. I'm their math support teacher, and I help them on the work that they're doing right on track with the same work my regular algebra students are doing. If your students are struggling, Khan Academy has some great uh, video tutorials as well. I think our video tutorials are pretty good. Um, if they watch them and they actually pause and try the sample problems, they'll do better. Um, there's another thing, actually, they, they do have access to the Envision text online. Um, and there is a good online uh, portion of that that the students can do. But like I said, it's really tough. So if they're a high-end student and they're going to miss a significant period of time, they may want to do that but it won't track exactly with, with our uh, lesson guides. MathAids.com is just a site where they can go and download algebra worksheets. So if we've already completed, say, one-step algebra problems, x plus 2 equals 7. Subtract 2 from each side, x equals 5. That's just one step to get to a solution. But if they're still struggling with that, MathAids.com has a bunch of worksheets that you can just print out and work on. And the nice part about it is you can print out the answer key too. So it's a good tool for folks that missed some key uh, elements and they need to go back a little bit and they just want some worksheets they can do at home and have an answer sheet go along with it. Because everything is handouts, students have to have a three-ring binder for keeping everything neat. Three ring binder is going to be broken into four different parts. There'll be homework, notes, quizzes, and tests. And they do get a grade for that binder. So it doesn't have to be just algebra, but it does have to be a portion of it set up just for algebra. And it should be in accordance with the class syllabus, which by now your students have all should have shown you. Math support, as I mentioned just a little while ago, I do do a math support class. It is... Uh, available for struggling students. Um, it's hard right now to get additional students in, but if it is something you're interested in, they should talk with their counselor about that. They would have to give up another class, an elective, to be able to do that. And they can only really f go into a class that has the social distancing seating available, um, overall number uh, cap available, because we try to keep that to under 14 students, and they would be able to, they would have to drop an elective that actually matches up with a math support class. So there's a lot of caveats, but it is a course that some students get a lot of benefit from. You should expect your student to have homework 
every night. And every day when they have an at-home day, you should expect that they're watching videos, lessons, they're taking notes, and they're doing homework from the prior class and learning via the video and the notes more work while they're home. So they should be working a full school day when they're at home. And after a normal school day, they will have homework. And generally, we try to keep it to about 20 to 30 minutes of homework each day. The exception to that is the day before a test or a quiz, we always just do review. So there may be a review packet or they may just be looking over their old notes and homeworks. So there wouldn't be anything to turn in, but they should be working on those review questions. Grading. Grading policy shown here. It's also listed in our syllabus. Obviously, quizzes and tests are a big portion of it, but homework and that notebook, that's still a quarter of their grade. So if they're not doing any homework whatsoever, even if they are an A student on quizzes and tests in the final, they have just dropped to a C. So homework is important. Generally, what we see is folks who don't do homework also do not do well on quizzes and tests. There are very few brilliant mathematicians who can get by on quizzes and tests without ever doing any practice. That's it for Algebra 1. At the end, I'm going to show just a little bit from our team site, but now I'm going to talk about Algebra 2. So if you're just an Algebra 1 parent, you can go ahead and skip forward. Algebra 2 Honors is basically the same algebra as Algebra 1 policies with some exceptions. First off, we have higher expectations. This is an Honors class. They've done well enough in their prior mathematics that they should have all of the foundations already built from Algebra 1 and from Geometry. And it's an honors course because they are volunteering to take a harder class than standard Algebra 2. So with those higher expectations, homework, not so much credit for late work. If you bring it the day that it's due and it's complete, then you get 100%, 2 out of 2. If you bring it and you've only done a small portion of it and I grade it that day, you get half credit. Or if you just totally forgot it, but you did it all and you left it at home, you can bring it in the next class day for half credit. And if you don't complete it, you don't turn it in, that's a straight up zero. Algebra 2 Honors will also have several mini quizzes. Mini quizzes are based on homework problems and often they are the exact same problems. If they're not the exact same problems, I will take a problem off of their homework and just change the numbers and the variable letter. And it will be the exact same type of problem, but they just won't be able to necessarily recognize it immediately from if they looked at their homework, for example. Students are expected that when they do their homework, they are checking their answers against the posted answer keys. So when they come to class, they can ask good questions and focus on the ones which they didn't understand even after seeing the correct answer. Often the honor students will be able to see the correct answer and find their own error and work through it on their own. So in class, our primary focus is going to be building on concepts by just checking over prior work. And also our grading policy is slightly different for Algebra 2 honors because we don't have a notebook requirement. Whether or not they keep a notebook, they absolutely should. But as an honor student, they are responsible for knowing what they need. Notebook. So now I'm going to go ahead and show you what the assignments look like in Teams. So here is a typical Algebra 1 assignment. So this one is actually due for at-home students, the B-Day students, on Friday, 25 September. In the posts, they will get a notice that there is a new assignment that's been posted. And I put B-Day students on there so they can tell if they're in school. First off, the instructions say A-Day students are in class. This is not for them. And then it tells B-Day students what they should do. They should watch the videos for Unit 3, Days 1 and 2. When it says that, the links for those videos are attached to the assignment. They can open either one of those. While they're watching those videos, they fill in their note taker. So they should pause the video, write down their notes. They should pause the video to go through sample problems when prompted. 
After that, they should work on a take-home test extra credit handout that we gave them. It tells them that is due back for B-Day students on their next in-class day on Monday. Whether or not they turn it in is up to them, so it is optional, but they would get one extra credit point for every answer they turned in that is correct. And then it tells them to get their notebook ready. We did have an issue during the smoke uh, days that we didn't have the students in class, that several of them were not opening assignments. On my screen, when I open up the assignments tab for this particular assignment, I will see three statuses for each student. Either it'll say not turned in, it'll just be a little uh, Ghostbuster symbol, circle with a line through it. What that means is they did not even open the assignment. So when I look and I see several days when students have not even opened their assignments, that's when I contact them and then I work on contacting parents as well. It could be a technical issue or it could be that they're just not looking. Um, in addition to that, there's one that just says viewed, which means they opened the assignment and at least looked at it. And then the next one is completed. So a completed assignment. This assignment on it does not have anything specifically that it says to attach and turn in. So once they watch the videos and they do their notes, they can go ahead and hit the submit. It'll let me know that they've completed it. And then it will also remove that assignment from their list of assignments and kind of clean up their, uh, their teams so they're not looking back thinking they're missing a bunch of things. So that's pretty much it for my uh, brief. So if you have any questions, again, my name is Doug McGough. I am in the directory, douglas.mcgough at washoschools.net. And I look forward to hearing from you and working with you and your student. Thank you.